What's going on, everyone? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Brain Gains, the show that is normally brought to you live from bodybuilding.com headquarters. My name is Tyler, and it's great to have you here. Thank you for joining us on our last episode of July. Don't forget, this is an open format show, meaning if you have any questions about something that we talk about today, feel free to post those in chat, and we will get to them if we can. If we cannot, or if you missed us live, make sure you send me an email at brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. That email is right here, brain.gains at bodybuilding.com, and we can talk and I can get back to you about questions that I may have missed. So like I said, thank you for being here. It is great to have everyone in chat. Uh, today we are talking about all things protein. So if you have questions about uh, whey protein or the difference between isolates and concentrates or what is casein or gainers or meal replacements or egg protein or plant protein. We're talking about all that today and what the difference between all those different things are so that you can make an educated decision about how to choose the right one for you. So again, feel free to throw those questions in chat and then we'll kind of answer those as we go. So uh, just as a quick uh, little insert, um, a lot of people don't know who I am. My name is Tyler McGlasson. I work in the regulatory compliance department at bodybuilding.com and it is my job to make sure that all of the uh, science on our website is up to date and is in line with all of the FDA and FTC regulations surrounding supplements. So I have to be on top of my game all the time about all the clinical research that's available for all of our products. So if you have questions about that, also feel free to throw those in chat as well. Uh, so we're going to jump right in with what is and will always be the most popular topic on bodybuilding.com and that's whey protein. Uh, so we're going to start off with um, why we like whey protein and then we'll go into the different types that you may see. So whey protein is, you know, have you, I don't know if you've heard of Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet eating her curds and whey. So whey is a, is a protein from milk that, that you can find when you separate uh, uh, milk and you can skim it off the top. Uh, but whey protein is really great for uh, the bodybuilding and exercise crowds for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, whey protein is a complete protein. And what that means is that whey protein has within it all nine of the essential amino acids. And generally speaking, a serving of whey protein, 20 to 25 grams, has you know, a full serving and full effective doses of all those amino acids at once. So it's a really great way to get everything that your body needs to start building muscle back without having to worry about getting your different sources of uh, amino acids from different protein sources. Uh, number two, uh, whey protein is relatively inexpensive. Um, we have access to a lot of milk and so we have access to a lot of whey protein. And so for us, it's great that we can supply you with a high quality protein that has a, a great absorbability and, and great uh, index of, of health for not very much we don't have to give you don't have to charge you a premium cost for what is really a premium product so that's kind of a win on both sides and then number three whey protein tastes pretty good um, generally speaking milk is is pretty favorable to the human palate and so it's easy for us to make flavors that are that our customers want to enjoy uh, the best protein and i'll say this multiple times throughout today the best protein is one that you are going to consume on a regular basis and not be afraid of consuming and whey protein makes that super easy so it's great for us to be able to make something that people like to consume because then you will use it at the right times and not be afraid or, or stay away from it okay so I, I get this question all the time what is the difference between like whey protein or 100 percent whey or whey concentrate which is the the technical name uh, and whey protein isolate because we generally see those two products separate from each other. So what's the difference between whey protein and whey protein isolate? So the difference is, is um, you, we use the word isolate very specifically here because the protein has been isolated from the whey protein concoction and we have removed as much of the fat and sugar as we can from whey. So if you think of milk, milk has protein in it, but it also has some fat in it, and it also has some sugar in it. And when I say sugar, I mean fairly specifically the lactose. And so whey protein isolate, we've put it through a couple of extra steps in order to remove as much of the lactose and as much of the fat as we can. So that accomplishes, uh, that means a couple of things. Number one is that generally whey protein isolate has a little bit lower calorie count compared to a concentrate because those extra macros have been removed. Uh, and number two, and this one's kind of unfortunate, is that sugar and fat taste really good. And so when we remove those things from whey protein, they generally don't taste quite the same. They, they'll, they'll feel a little bit thinner uh, and they're a little bit more difficult to, to make that savory flavor. 
Uh, and then another label that you'll see on either whey protein concentrate or whey protein isolate is the word hydrolyzed. Hydrolyzed is a separate step from the separation of protein. And what that means is we've put it through one more step uh, and mixed it with some enzymes that help kind of chop up the proteins that make up whey protein. Uh, we've just chopped it up so that it is easier for your body to digest and quicker for you to get those amino acids from consumption to your muscles. It just decreases the number of steps, so it increases the rate at which that can take place. Uh, it doesn't have any effect on the macro counts. It, it shouldn't have a, a huge effect on the flavor at all, uh, but it is an extra step in the processing. So that's why hydrolyzed protein is generally considered like a, an, a, an, another step up in the premium process. So. All right, that's whey protein. We have a boatload of questions here. So thank you everyone for jumping right in uh, with good questions. Um, Ahmed on YouTube says, what are your thoughts on Optimum Nutrition? Optimum is, is an extremely reputable brand and they're one of the very few that we have on our website that is what's called vertically integrated. And that means that Optimum Nutrition uh, does their own manufacturing, but they also do their own sourcing. So the Optimum Nutrition owns the dairies that has the cows that give them the milk where they get the whey protein, where they turn it into a product. So they own and operate every step of the way. Uh, and that gives them really great quality control. Uh, what is the best casein protein? We'll talk about casein and a little bit about what it is. Uh, but when we, t when we ask what best is, Caseins, at least from, from the major reputable brands, caseins are, are very close to each other when it comes to product quality. Uh, the, the best casein is one that you will consume regularly. And so that means one that you like the flavor of and the macros are good for you. But as long as you're buying from like the larger, more reputable brands, the casein's gonna be casein. And so um, that's, that's about the best I can tell you. Find one that you like. Is raw whey protein good for you? Good for you is kind of a, kind of a transient question. Um, yes, protein is, is very good for you and protein should be one of the main focuses of your macro calculations. And so, yes, um, I don't know what you're asking when you say raw whey protein. If you just mean like if I were to just take a handful of unflavored whey protein and stuff it in my mouth, uh, it probably wouldn't taste very good because raw unflavored whey protein kind of tastes like crap. Uh, but is it good for you from a macro standpoint? Yeah, like we mentioned before, whey protein uh, has a really great amino acid profile. And so uh, from a muscle building standpoint, it has just about everything that you need, which is which is good. Any good proteins for people that are lactose intolerant? Yeah, actually, we're gonna talk about a couple more of them uh, here in a few minutes, but there are a lot of things that someone who is lactose intolerant can do in order to get their protein without consuming a whey protein product. And I completely understand there are a huge number of people that are lactose intolerant. And so that is like the main frustration when it comes to whey protein. Like I want everyone to be able to use it and enjoy it without having any of the gurgles, uh, but it's just not the case. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about those in just a minute. Uh, I have a whole like section on my little document here just about that. Uh, are BCAAs needed if already taking protein? Uh, Giuseppe, that's a super good question. And the answer is if you are getting all the protein that you need uh, and within that protein is enough leucine, is enough valine and isoleucine, then no, you shouldn't need it. Those, uh, those BCAAs are merely a piece of the puzzle. And if you are getting that piece from the protein that you're already consuming, then you shouldn't see any extra benefit on top of already consuming what you need. Um, we like to talk about BCAAs very specifically as a supplement to your diet. We see them most commonly needed in uh, proteins that don't have a full amino acid profile. So there's a lot of plant proteins specifically that are low in the branched chain amino acids, uh, something like hemp protein or, or pumpkin seed protein, watermelon protein. Uh, we see these products that are, that are great for people who are on plant diets, but unfortunately they generally don't have full spectrum amino acid profiles. And leucine is one of the amino acids that's, that's actually fairly uncommon in plant protein. And so, if you are getting your protein from plant sources, then you may consider a BCAA supplement, but it's dependent on the amino acids that you're getting from that protein. Uh, Alicia says the best way for lactose intolerant. Um, I think we actually just talked about that. So we'll get there in just a minute uh, with the lactose stuff. Um, uh, Santi says, when is the best time to have your protein drink before or after you work out? The best time to get your protein is whenever you can get it. The most important factor for protein consumption is total protein consumption throughout the course of a day. Your main focus should be getting your macro minimum. And so if you've decided, okay, I uh, want to consume 150 grams of protein throughout the day, make sure you're getting that 150 grams first 
and then you can think about timing. So according to the International Society for Sport Nutrition, having it within range of your workout, whether that be before or after, is, is like something that you can focus on, but there's not a huge difference in, in outcomes, whether you take it before or after, as long as you are A, getting the total amount of protein that you need to be getting, and that is easily the most important thing, and then B, they say there is a slight improvement when you are taking it, uh, the word is adjacent, when you are taking it adjacent to your workout. And so if you wanna take it before, cool. If you wanna take it after, great. But you know, an hour long workout is not gonna make a huge difference when it comes to the total like muscle protein synthesis that you're gonna see in the hours that, that come after that workout. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, we're gonna answer one more and then we're gonna talk about casein. So Ahmed says, is it beneficial to use protein powder when you are losing weight? Yes, protein has an extremely awesome thermic effect of food. It's a very fun term, thermic effect of food. And that means that it, it requires your body a lot of energy in order to break protein down to become usable. So it, you have to expend calories in order to get the calories out of protein. And so protein actually really doesn't act like a carb or a fat when it comes to uh, calorie intake. And so we've found that when people are trying to lose weight, you can actually allow them to consume more calories if those calories are coming strictly from protein uh, because your body has to work so hard to break that protein down that it doesn't act quite the same as, as like a carbohydrate, for example. So yeah, if you're losing weight, up that protein and, and enjoy it because it's, it's really great for, for that process. Okay, so uh, just real quick touch on, on the next section and then we'll come back for more questions because you guys are, are amazing with the, with the questions today. So thank you for that. Uh, okay, casein. So we talked about this just a moment ago. What is casein? So casein is the other side of Little Miss Muffet. So we talked about the whey. Casein is the protein that comes from the curds. Casein is uh, uh, what's called a, a micellar bubble. Micellar is a very fun word for basically casein that is uh, wrapped in fat. It has, it has this nice little capsule of, of fat cells that uh, surround it. And so it requires your body more time to break down casein and get it into your bloodstream than it does whey protein. I don't have the image with me here and I probably should have thought of that beforehand. But basically the, the, the philosophy behind this whole thing is that whey protein gets into your bloodstream very quickly and then you're done with it very quickly. So it goes up and it goes down very fast. And people like that because when you consume it, it gets into your blood very fast and, and you've got it. Great, that's, that's great. But with casein, it does not go up and down very quickly. It goes up very slowly and then it stays there for a while and then it stays there and then it comes back down. And so we see the effects of amino acid levels in the blood from casein last many hours as opposed to one to two hours. So uh, I'm talking like four to six to even seven hours of increased amino acid levels within the blood thanks to a serving of casein. So you're not getting that huge spike right away because it doesn't absorb nearly as quickly, but it is lasting a lot longer. And so that's very useful. Uh, we've seen uh, the best effects of casein when you are taking it um, either before you are going to spend a long time not eating during the day, or people like to take it at night so that there is no time during your sleep when your body needs to have amino acids and it doesn't have access to them in the blood. So what I mean is that if your body decides that it needs to start breaking down amino acids for energy, we want it to break down amino acids that are in the bloodstream and readily available. We don't want it to say, I need amino acids to break down. I should pull those from muscle because that's the only place I can find them. Because then you're pulling uh, protein from your muscle and you may be uh, putting yourself into a negative nitrogen balance, which is not what we want. So that's casein. Uh, let's see, Devesh asks, can teenagers take protein? Uh, generally speaking, yeah, protein is food. That's the easiest way to describe protein, it's food. Uh, it would be equivalent to drinking milk and, and we are all about having teenagers consume high quality foods. So yes, uh, if you really feel like you wanna discuss um, supplement intake with your doctor, great, go do that. They know a lot more about health than I do. Uh, but I, I, I would generally say that protein is probably pretty safe. Uh, so. There we go. Okay. Is it cool to mix whey with milk? Andrew, it is super cool. Go in and just mix away because milk actually makes it a little bit thicker uh, and makes it a lot more like a milkshake. If you're watching your macros, know that the milk has 
protein and fat and sugar in it. But if, as long as you're aware of the calories that you're consuming alongside the protein because of the milk, it tastes way better. That, that is the way to go. Uh, let's see. Uh, which protein is better for hard gainers, whey or soy? Uh, we actually talked about this on our last episode. At the beginning of July, we did an episode very specifically about plant protein and, and how you can effectively build muscle with plant protein relative to diets that are not restricted to plants. Uh, and we, we found, uh, again, I'm going to revert back to my friends at the International Society of Sport Nutrition. We found that soy protein does have a, a full essential amino acid profile, but when compared to whey protein, soy did not uh, uh, perform quite as well when it came to muscle and strength gains over a period of like eight to 12 weeks. And so if you're looking to gain as much as you can and, and uh, get the most out of your protein product, then whey is probably the best you can do. That is to say, uh, as long as you are not lactose intolerant, because whey protein does have that lactose in it. Uh, speaking of gainers, that's actually the next point on my list. So what is a gainer and how is it different from a whey protein product? So essentially a gainer is just more. So when we are uh, in the process of, of trying to get people to gain weight, gain muscle weight, gain good weight, not just getting fat, but gaining strength and muscle size and lean muscle mass, your body needs calories. It needs building blocks to make that muscle with. And so with gainers, we are trying to give it everything that it could possibly need in the most efficient way possible. So those who are trying to gain a lot of muscle are, are looking to get high protein foods, but also high calorie foods because building muscle requires a lot of protein, but it also requires a lot of energy to do. So gainers usually use whey protein because you can, because it is effective, because it's efficient and because it's generally low cost. Uh, but then they also uh, generally serve that protein, uh, which is a higher dose, usually 40 to 50 grams. They serve that protein alongside a bunch of carbohydrates. Now I've seen the full spectrum of carbohydrates that come along with gainers, everything from uh, really starchy maltodextrin all the way up to um, like really high quality um, uh, uh, complex carbohydrates. And so you just have to decide what's best for you. You'll also, as a, as a customer, have to decide how many calories you want per serving. I've seen gainers go from three to 400 calories per serving, which is fine. That's, a, that's kind of a low calorie meal, uh, all the way up to like 1,500 calories per serving. And it requires like six heaping scoops of this powder in order to, to be a serving. And it all depends on what your goals are. Some people are looking to consume four to five to 6,000 calories in a day because they're looking to gain lots and the muscles that they have require a lot of energy as it is. And so you need to decide what your macros need to be over the course of the day. And this gainer will simply help fill in those gaps for protein, for carbs, and then total calories. This is a really efficient way to get calories when sometimes consuming that much food can be difficult, not only time consuming to prepare, but just from a space standpoint, people's stomachs are only so big. And so if you can get a lot of calories in a single shake, that may help a lot of people with that as well. Another thing we see in a lot of gainers are enzymes, things that will help your stomach break down all the protein and all the carbs. Generally speaking, it's a lot that you're putting into your stomach all at once. And so sometimes you'll see these enzyme blends uh, being given alongside these gainers just to kind of help things move along a little quicker, if you know what I mean. So that's a gainer. And if you have more questions, again, please feel free to ask. We're doing great on questions today. So guys, you're the best. Uh, is plant protein based protein product better than whey protein? I heard some sides. Okay, Don, we will get to plant proteins in just a minute. I see you. Great question, Don. We'll get there in just a moment. Uh, is it okay to mix protein and creatine in the shake and drink at the same time? Marco, 100%. It's okay. They don't interact with each other almost at all. And in fact, it may actually even be better because a protein shake has the potential to increase your insulin just to a degree. Your body responds to the presence of food. And so it secretes insulin and that insulin can actually help absorb the creatine, which is super. Uh, let's see another plant protein question. We will get it. Um, I'm super skinny. Should I use weight gainers or whey casein? Uh, so I don't know the specifics of your situation. I don't know what your daily food intake looks like, but generally speaking, people who are looking to gain lean mass need to consume more calories. You need to work out hard and, and focus on strength training to really put that intensity on your muscles so that they feel the need to grow. And then you need to provide them with the high quality calories, uh, in order to do so. 
So you may try whey protein with a standard strength or growth program first. And then if you feel like you're not gaining enough, maybe you need to up your calories a little bit and a good way to do that may be with a gainer. So best of luck. Is it so necessarily a negative effect to have too many BCAAs? So Michelle, I think is asking, is there such thing as overdosing on BCAAs? Not to my knowledge. I've never heard of such a thing as overdosing on, on leucine, for example. I don't know any examples of that. I've never seen or read anything about it before. If you're in chat and you have read something about um, any negative effects of too many amino acids, send them my way, uh, brain.gain to bodybuilding.com. Uh, I would love to learn more about that if that was the case, but to my knowledge, I haven't seen any negative effects of it. Uh, the only thing that I know about uh, leucine, for example, is that it has been found to be most effective if you are consuming about three grams of leucine per serving of protein that you are taking throughout the day. And since that's about how much you get with a, with a scoop of whey protein, it's pretty good. So yeah, that's what I got for you about BCAAs. Does whey protein make you break out? Uh, if it does, that's crazy because I don't think it should. Again, let's revert back to what we talked about a little bit earlier that whey protein is, is food, right? It, it, it would be the equivalent of drinking uh, a big glass of milk, right? And, and milk actually has more things in it than whey protein would. Whey is a simpler product. Uh, and so if you break out because of milk, because you are lactose intolerant and, and in some way that leads to breaking out, then whey protein might have the same effect. But generally speaking, there's nothing in whey that would tell me it would have a negative effect on your skin. All right, moving on. We'll answer more questions as we go, but there's quite a few more points here that I wanted to talk about, including all those plant protein questions. And guys, if you have like a lot of questions about plants, um, I highly recommend you go to the YouTube uh, page for bodybuilding.com. So it's youtube.com slash bodybuilding.com. And I don't have that link here to show you, I'm sorry. Maybe my awesome moderator can throw that in the chat. Uh, and the last episode that we did, so we have a playlist just for brain gains. And the last episode that we did a couple weeks ago was entirely about plant-based diets. And so we, we spent half hour, 45 minutes talking about plant protein and all the other nutrients that people on plant diets need to focus on in order to get there. So I highly recommend you check that out, but we're gonna touch on plant proteins here in just a moment as well. Uh, okay, so another category of proteins we have is meal replacements. Meal replacements are not super different from gainer products in that they contain both protein and relatively high amounts of carbs. The difference that I see with meal replacements is that a lot of times they get uh, their carbs from whole foods. So like sweet potato carbs or wheat carbs or uh, whole grain carbs. And then another thing that we see is they generally like to supply the recommended daily intake of a lot of vitamins alongside it. So the assumption is like you are consuming this product instead of food. This is a, this is replacing a meal. And so when we formulate those products, we want to replace that meal with the nutrients that you would have gotten otherwise, like your vitamins and minerals that you need throughout the day. Okay. So let's touch on a couple of products or a couple of categories that users can look for if they are lactose intolerant. So one category that we see a lot of is egg protein. Uh, so this is protein that has been isolated either from the entire like chicken egg or just from the egg whites. And egg protein is actually really high quality. It's not quite as high on the PDCAS scale as whey protein. If whey is 100, I think egg is like 85 or 90 on the PDCAS uh, scale, but it is very good. Uh, and you get your entire essential amino acid profile, which is super duper. Another category that we have is, is protein made from meat. So you, uh, we have an entire meat protein category. And what that means is they've taken um, uh, meat like steak or chicken or turkey, and they've isolated the protein out of those products and turned them into a powder that you can consume. Uh, so you would be getting the exact same amino acids that you would had you been consuming that meat yourself. And again, with egg or meat protein, there's no lactose in those. There's no lactose present in those uh, products at the beginning or in the protein that you are getting there. And then finally, um, one other thing we're gonna touch on before we get to more questions and then the plants is collagen peptides. So collagen is another really popular category right now because collagen is, is probably the number, not probably, collagen is the most common protein in your body. And so you can consume those peptides uh, and we've actually seen improvements in joint health and in skin health. Uh, and overall, like collagen's pretty good for you. Uh, it's also really easy for us to flavor. So it makes for really good products as well. You can mix it in with water or with coffee or whatever. 
Uh, the only thing I would, I would warn you of is that collagen, I use the word peptides very purposefully here because collagen is not like full protein, for example. It's just little pieces of protein made of very specific amino acids. And collagen is generally not a complete protein. Generally speaking, it does not contain all nine essential amino acids. And so if you are looking for collagen products, either make sure that your product does have all the essential amino acids or figure out what it does not have and make sure that you find that focus in your diet somewhere else so you're not missing anything. So there you go. Okay, a couple more questions before we move on to plant protein. What should be the ratio of whey protein to creatine monohydrate? So I wouldn't think of it as a specific ratio. There's just certain amounts of each that you need to get throughout the day. So when we're talking about creatine monohydrate, the general recommendation is if you're taking it every day, you should look to be consuming three to five grams a day. Now you can spread that out or concentrate it as much as you like, as long as your focus is three to five grams of creatine a day. Um, it doesn't have to be with protein, but it can. It doesn't have to be in water, but it can. Uh, just total consumption of that is what's most important. And then like we talked about before with whey protein, your total protein intake is your focus, right? Making sure you're getting that protein macro minimum throughout the day. And again, you can get that in little pieces throughout the day. You can get that in bigger chunks throughout the day. You can mix it with your creatine. It's all gravy, but uh, it is more about total amounts than it is about ratio of one to the other. Now, if you have one serving of whey protein in your shaker alongside one serving of creatine, it will generally be about 20 to 25 grams of whey to five grams of creatine. That's generally how we portion them out. So there you go. Uh, Ali says, I love your Fallout 4 poster. Thank you, that's really nice. I got my Destiny poster here too and my plant, but I appreciate it, thank you. Um, let's see, what's the difference between whey protein and mass gainers? Uh, Imran, we talked about it just a little bit earlier, but the biggest difference between whey protein and mass gainers is the number of calories that you're getting in a serving. So mass gainers have whey protein in them, but they also have a lot of carbs in order to get, in order to increase that calorie intake per shake. Uh, how can I figure out how much protein I should be taking? Ahmed, that's a super good question. I bet my mod uh, can throw into chat and into the uh, uh, description below the official bodybuilding.com macro calculator. Uh, just plug in, I think it asks like your age and your weight and your height and your general activity level and a couple of other questions and then boom, it'll tell you exactly how much you should start with and then you can modify from there if you like. Uh, is sucralose and protein flavoring over time harmful? Uh, Rose Linda, we see this question all the time, um, but uh, we can very safely say that sucralose is a very safe ingredient. Um, the FDA has tested and tested and tested and tested this ingredient because it is so prominent in so many products everywhere. And I would only expect the ingredient sucralose to be dangerous if you are consuming it in like heaping handfuls of, of pure sucralose, which you will never consume enough for it to be dangerous. It is a very safe ingredient that um, we use with, with a great deal of confidence. So I, I wish you luck. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Looking through my questions here. Let me ask you this. How were the Spartans so built? Did they have whey protein? Colby, that's an interesting question. I, uh, I actually wasn't there when they were getting super cut, but I would expect that it has to do with the fact that they were so extremely active. Uh, they were on their feet training all the time. They were, you know, fighting in combat all the time, which is a very intense exercise. And then, um, you know, from what I know, their their diet consisted of some meat, but then also a lot of grains and beans, which are also very good uh, amino acid profiles. Uh, but I think it comes down to just general activity and they're probably not gonna get super fat because uh, they weren't overfed in almost any way. So they had to be pretty lean. Okay, let's talk about plant protein before I forget because I promised like 10 people in chat that I was gonna talk about plant protein. So uh, we see plant proteins in a number of different sources, right? From soy to hemp to pea protein to, like I mentioned before, watermelon seed protein, pumpkin seed protein, and many other different plants because we've, we've gotten really good at pulling the proteins from a lot of different sources. Now the question comes like, can you be as successful taking a plant protein as you can a whey protein? And the answer is absolutely, you can. You're giving your body the exact same number of macros, right? If you're consuming the same amount of protein from a plant versus whey protein, you're doing great. 
The thing you have to focus on is the amino acids. And we've been talking about this throughout the entire day, making sure that you have a complete protein full of leucine, full of isoleucine, valine, and the other essential amino acids. And it, like as, as someone who is on a plant diet, it is your responsibility to make sure that you are getting everything that you need. That being said, plant protein can provide that for you. It's just a little bit more difficult. And so uh, when you are looking for your products, make sure you ask for the amino acid profile or sometimes it'll say we have made a mix of proteins here that provide you with a complete protein. Uh, I, look, EVL is a really good example. The EVL stacked plant protein uh, has on it that they have used pea protein and rice protein. And between peas and rice, you are provided with a complete protein that has all the amino acids in it that a whey protein would have. And so you generally don't have to worry about it. Then you can just take a scoop of plant protein like you would a scoop of whey protein and you have everything that you need. One factor with plant protein is that there is there are no plants that are as protein dense as animal protein. And so a 35 to 40 gram scoop of plant protein might even have less protein than a smaller scoop of whey. So that's why sometimes you see that plant protein like jugs Will, will probably not provide as many servings uh, as whey protein because we just can't give it to you as concentrated as whey protein because it doesn't exist. Um, whey protein concentrates and isolates generally come uh, anywhere from 80 to 95% protein in the powder, whereas plant proteins really max out at like 70, and I've seen some as low as 45 or 50. We just can't get the protein that concentrated from plants. So if the question is, can it be done? Absolutely. And if you want to go back to our previous episode that is entirely about plants, I highly recommend it because we spent way longer talking about it back then. Uh, but if, can it be done? Yes. It just takes a little bit more homework and a, and a little bit of extra dedication uh, to get there. Uh, okay. A couple more factors. We talked about this a little bit earlier is timing. Um, we see a lot of questions about timing. When should I take my protein? And like I said, the most important thing about protein is, is getting the amount that you need, is getting your volume, your, your macros in. So if you will need to hit 150 uh, grams of protein per day, make sure you get that. Uh, and a lot of people struggle to hit that macro every day. It's, it, it's a habit that you have to get into. And then after you are confident that you are consuming enough protein, then we can start talking about when, but it's, it's really so much less important uh, for when than it is how much. And the, the official word is have at least one serving adjacent to your exercise, which means either right before or right after. Whatever's comfortable for you is fine. Uh, okay, and then uh, finally, the last little point I wanted to give before we do a couple more questions of which, oh my God, there's like 30 of them here. You guys are great. Uh, but the last little thing I wanted to point into is, is the best protein, the best one that I can recommend is one that you will stick with because uh, making sure that you have a product that you are happy to consume continuously is one that you will follow through with. And those are the best supplements because you are using them like clockwork. Like you don't have to think about it. It is part of your routine. And so having a protein that you think is good for you, but it tastes like crap. Like if you're not enjoying it and if you don't feel it's beneficial to you, then you're probably not going to use it. And then that supplement becomes useless to you. So the best supplements are the ones you're going to use and use well. So that's the best advice I can give. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Blind Place asks, did I mean a glass of milk is equivalent to a scoop of whey protein? Uh, okay. So I, I remember what I said, but that's not exactly what I was going for. So when I said that whey protein should be kind of like drinking a glass of milk, I'm saying that according to your stomach, the things that you are getting from whey protein, the ingredients that you're consuming are about the same as the ingredients you're consuming as a part of a glass of milk in that uh, you're not surprising your body with anything from whey protein. So there's nothing in whey protein that will make your face break out. If you're already consuming milk, you're not getting anything new from a whey protein shake. Uh, the macros of the two products are different. Whey protein is isolated protein from milk, or I should say concentrated protein from milk. So you are getting more protein as a part of a, a whey shake than you are as a, as a glass of milk. But when it comes to like, is there a negative effect of this product? Uh, if you can have a glass of milk, then you can have whey protein. They're, they're ingredient wise, they're pretty equivalent. Uh, if, if I work hard on my feet for eight hours, is there any problem using whey? Uh, Will from Facebook, the only problem that I could foresee with using whey is if you're lactose intolerant. Like we talked about, whey protein is, is just food. It's just nutrition. Um, how much protein to become Dwayne the Rock Johnson? 
I feel like I saw a YouTube video of this one time, and I think I, uh, he eats a lot of tilapia, he eats a lot of, of, of really lean chicken, and he eats a lot. I think, I think it was something like five or 6,000 calories a day, but he's doing two or three exercise routines a day. Uh, the guy's a machine. Big shout out to Dwayne the Rock, the Rock Johnson. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Wow, got tongue tied on that one. All right, that's all the time I have for questions today. Everyone who is in chat, you have been absolutely amazing with questions and I'm sure that there are a bunch that I didn't get to. If I missed your question, first of all, I'm sorry. There were so many good ones today. So thank you everyone for participating. Send me an email at brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. I have my eyes on that email as much as I can. And I've had some really great conversations with people through that email we, you know, last week when we, or last earlier this month when we did the plant protein uh, uh, episode that actually led to some really, really great conversations and some great back and forth. So please utilize this email. I would love to talk to you more about what protein is right for you and, and answer some questions that you may have. Uh, okay, before I let you go, uh, we do have to, we have to, I do get to show you some new products and some great products that we have on the website. Um, if you are looking for proteins, this is probably a good place to start. So I've got some skew images for you. So if you want just like a, a, a protein that has it all, we like to recommend the, the Gym Pro Gym Protein. So Pro Gym has whey protein, it has egg protein, it has casein protein all baked into a ton of great flavors like chocolate cookie crunch and vanilla peanut butter swirl. Um, and so when you consume gym uh, or pro gym, I should say, you get a quick jump in protein uh, in your blood thanks to the whey protein. Egg protein absorbs a little bit slower than whey, but not as slow as casein, but then there's also casein. So you get uh, amino acids in your blood for a very long time, but also very quickly thanks to pro gym. Uh, probably should have put this up. Boom, that is what pro gym looks like. Uh, the newest flavor is the vanilla peanut butter swirl, and it's it's bonkers. It's really good. Make sure you check that out. Um, secondly, we have the RSP True Fit. Um, so this is a much more natural take on whey protein. Uh, so this is grass-fed whey that also includes like a greens blend, and I think we've talked about greens blends multiple times on multiple times on this show. Uh, but if you like a, a more natural take on whey protein, then True Fit is your is your shot right there. Uh, it has chocolate, and I believe cinnamon churro is also available on the website right now. Uh, we spent some time talking about uh, whey isolates. So our number one whey isolate is the Dimatize ISO 100. Um, it only has 110 calories per serving. So it's, it's very lean, uh, very good for people looking to get their protein consumption while also not getting too many extra calories with 11 flavors on that one, including birthday cake and get this, actual Fruity Pebbles. They have worked with Fruity Pebbles in order to make a Fruity Pebbles ISO 100. It's very good. Uh, let's see, we have the signature casein. So we talked about casein, remember this is the one that absorbs slowly but lasts for a really long time when it comes to having amino acids in your blood. We make a pretty good one, I think. Uh, I got to be on the crew that helped develop this uh, flavor, so uh, make sure you check it out. I mean, the flavor is chocolate, but it's very good and if you haven't tried making casein into a pudding yet, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Make sure you check it out, it's delicious and it's a really healthy snack, uh, an easy, fun way to get protein that you need. Gainers, we talked about them. They've got uh, high protein, but also uh, uh, some extra carbs in there to help increase the amount of calories you intake throughout the day. This 12 pound bag is exclusive to bodybuilding.com. So if you wanna get a bunch for a really good price, the Rivalis Clean Gainer is the way to go. We've got six flavors of it right now, including chocolate fudge and some more. So make sure you check that one out. I talked about this a little bit earlier in the episode, but the EVL stacked plant protein has pea and rice protein in it. So there's no lactose here, but they have created a complete protein. Uh, so for those looking for a complete protein like whey that doesn't have uh, the lactose in it like a milk product would, this is a great place to start. It also has four grams of naturally occurring BCAAs as a part of that. So just so you kind of know how many branched chain aminos are in there. Uh, and then there's also a greens blend as well. I believe it becomes in vanilla and chocolate as well. We talked about egg protein. So Gaspari has a proven egg product. So if you wanna, if you wanna get a high quality protein that does not have lactose in it, uh, Gaspari has a really good one. It comes, uh, it's actually sweetened with stevia as well. So I know someone saw the, uh, or someone asked about sucralose in the chat. This one doesn't have sucralose, it is sweetened with stevia. Uh, so you can follow up on that there. Uh, I've been asked to remind you that all these links will be in the chat. So if you are watching right now, I believe our moderator is posting the links to these products in chat. If you're watching this uh, later, the links will be down in the description below. 
Finally, the last product that I wanted to show you today is a pretty cool one. This is the Animal Meal. So this is a meal replacement product. It's not a gainer, it's a meal replacement product. And the carbs in this one, like I mentioned before, the carbs come from foods. So we have proteins from uh, peas, from eggs, from beef, from sweet potatoes. So th this, is, this is actual food turned into a product that you can make a shake out of and enjoy. And it tastes really good. So make sure you check out Animal Meal. It is also naturally sweetened with stevia and monk fruit. Uh, so if you are a big fan of that, make sure you check out Animal Meal. So there we go. Uh, finally, a couple sales we got going on. 25% off the bodybuilding.com signature line, 25% off the Optimum Nutrition Gold Standard Whey and Plant Protein. I know we had a question about Optimum earlier. 25% off Caged Isolate and Casein from Caged. And then we actually, the EVL Stack Plant Protein is currently two for $54. So it's, it's like 22 bucks off normal. It's, it's a great deal. So if you wanna try that Plant Protein EVL Stack, follow up on the link that we put into chat. And there's a smoking deal on there for you so anyway guys the last thing i'm going to leave you with is uh we wanted to spotlight one of our new um body fit programs called combat fit so the army combat fitness test or the acft is a challenge unlike anything in the united states uh, military has ever experienced muscular strength endurance mental toughness everything you are from head to toe is on trial and not passing is not an option you need to be prepared and this unique training protocol is how you do it Combat Fit is your plan to not just pass the ACFT, but to crush it. So it is, is two four week phases. One of them is a prep phase and one of them is a, a plateau phase or a peak phase. And so the idea is that you can do the prep phase as many times as you like. And then when you know that test is four weeks away, that's when you do phase two to build up and, and plateau right at when the test is happening. It's three to four workouts a week. They're generally focused on beginner exercises, but you will need a gym to do it because a lot of the things that you're going to be doing as a part of the ACFT do have equipment. And so a lot of that stuff isn't available at home. But anyway, check it out if you're in the military or even if you're not and you want to just do a full body like overall muscle strength fitness workout plan. This is a great one and it's brand new and we're really proud of it. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, links again are in the chat. They're in the description down below. We'd love for you to give it a look. But anyway, guys, um, thank you again. We had a lot of great questions today and I'll look forward to talking to you guys. Uh, again next month. So hopefully you have a good one. And until then, keep on lifting. Whatever you've got, bring it out. I want the best of everything. If you want it, you're going to be successful. So when she gets to the top, the dumbbells are horizontal again. Those are perfect. This is where you leave the excuses and you make some real change. You're going to get in, you're going to get out, and you're going to get the best workouts of your life. Three. Two, one. Here we go. Together we're stronger. Trust me.